happy. Tom, did you want to come up? Uh, how much time would you like? Well, I'd, I'd like to, to take about eight minutes. Now I want to play a short video and then reserve 10 minutes at the end for any rebuttal comments. That'd be fine. Okay, thank you. May I have the first slide, please? Thank you. Okay, I am Tom Pomisano. I'm the Vice President of Decommissioning and the Chief Nuclear Officer for the San Onofre Generating Plant. I'm here on behalf of Southern California Edison, San Diego Gas and Electric, Cities of Anaheim and Riverside. Collectively, we have been the owners and are now responsible for the decommissioning of the plant. Uh, a couple quick comments. I would like to thank the staff. There's a lot of hard work behind the staff report and a lot of work uh, answering public questions and comments, and I appreciate what that takes. We are fully supportive of the recommendation and the special commission or conditions that the staff is advocating to the commission. So we appreciate that. Southern California Edison has been safely managing used nuclear fuel at its San Onofre nuclear plant for four decades. Now that San Onofre is retired, we plan to put all of the used nuclear fuel in an interim storage system until it is removed from the site. This proven technology is called dry cask storage. It has been used for three decades throughout the United States, including marine environments on the west and east coasts. Southern California Edison's continued commitment to safe storage of used nuclear fuel is at the heart of our decision to promptly place this radioactive waste in robust, dry storage containers. Our decision also reflects feedback from the California Energy Commission and community leaders who prefer dry storage of used nuclear fuel. No active cooling systems are needed. Dry storage produces no air emissions or discharges from operation. The California Coastal Commission is reviewing our plan to expand dry storage at San Onofre. Today, about one-third of San Onofre's used nuclear fuel is already in these steel and concrete containers. The other two-thirds is stored and cooled in what we call a spent fuel pool. This is known as wet storage. Picture a concrete structure that is 40 feet deep, lined with steel and filled with water. We have chosen a robust, partially below ground storage system to expand fuel storage at San Onofre. The storage casks will be made with a highly corrosion resistant grade of stainless steel and then encased in a concrete monolith. The design exceeds California earthquake requirements and protects against hazards such as earthquakes, water, fire, or tsunamis. The casks are manufactured by a global supplier, Holtec International. California has four used nuclear fuel dry storage facilities, including San Onofre, two Holtec systems at Humboldt Bay and Diablo Canyon, and one near Sacramento. Placing San Onofre's used fuel in sealed canisters is a critical first step before it can be accepted by an off-site storage facility. Southern California Edison and the co-owners of San Onofre support removal of the fuel from the site by the federal government as required by law. We also support alternatives to establish interim used fuel storage sites in New Mexico and Texas. Until licensed off-site storage is available, we will continue to do what we have done for the past 40 years, safely manage and store San Onofre's used nuclear fuel. Okay, thank you. Uh, would, could we go to the next slide, please? So as the slide is teed up, again, the staff has done a very thorough job in their report and their recommendation and covered the key points in their presentation, so I'm going to be brief. First, the purpose and need for this permit is to continue the safe storage of fuel. We have stored spent fuel at San Onofre for over 40 years in wet storage and now wet and dry storage, and we will continue to do that. In a decommissioned plant, which has no need for an active spent fuel pool, which takes active systems and people and water supplies and electrical sources, it is much preferred to move fuel relatively soon into dry cast storage. They are passive systems with no outside need for water or cooling or electricity for cooling, and they are a superior system in a decommissioned plant. This permit allows us to do that, allows us to do that by mid-2019. And it's also really the first step in preparing to transfer fuel off-site. We are all aligned that the Department of Energy needs to remove fuel from this site sooner rather than later, very consistent with our discussions at the recent San Diego County Board. Next slide. 
I want to show you a map. There, there are, the country has years of experience, over 30 years, with dry cast storage installations nationwide. Of particular interest on this map are the number on the East Coast and the West Coast in marine environments subject to very similar environments to San Onofre. We have experience with these environments. The canister systems and cast systems are very similar, if not identical, to what we currently use and will use, and they have performed excellently. There has been no leakage of radioactive material from a cask or a canister in service. Next slide. Next couple slides have been covered. I'm just going to skip through. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, the milestones, the key thing here, start construction January 2016, complete construction mid-2017, have the pools offloaded by mid-2019, six years after the plant was permanently closed. Go to the next slide, please. A couple quick closing comments. First, we respectfully request that the Commission approve the permit. A delay waiting for the Department of Energy response is really not going to serve any useful purpose. That agency takes a long time to respond to anything. Secondly, dry cast storage is a proven, safe, passive technology. It is superior in a decommissioning plant to wet storage in the fuel pools. It is preferable for decommissioned plants. The Union of Concerned Scientists on April of 2015 made a presentation to the California Energy Commission urging decommissioned nuclear plants to empty their spent fuel pools in nominally six years. This plant, supported by this permit, does that. The other three current active plants preparing for decommissioning the country are all intending to empty their spent fuel pools in a six-year time frame. So the general consensus is emptying the pools sooner rather than later is the appropriate way to manage spent fuel in a decommissioned site. Uh, last comment, uh, it, again, it is a first step really to moving fuel off-site and preparing to remove the fuel from the San Onofre location to a more suitable either interim storage location or final repository. With that, I'll be available for any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Lombard, thank you for your patience, and uh, we'll invite you up, and then we'll follow with Ray Lutz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and commissioners. It's an honor to be before you today to talk about the, the UMAC system, the NRC work that we've done to review this system and also look oversee its deployment at the Center of California Edison site. I want to say that we appreciate and respect the Commission's purview over this project and also appreciate and respect the public comments that we have received on the UMAC system Rev Zero, the Amendment 1 that was developed and submitted to us for review that covers the seismic capacity of the system as well as other interactions that we have had over the last several months on dry cast storage systems in general. I am the Director of Spent Fuel Management at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The folks that I work with review and make decisions about dry cast storage systems that were submitted under application and also dry cast, no, sorry, transportation systems for spent fuel that are submitted to us as well. We've, we do about 100 packages a year, 100 cases a year between spent fuel storage and transportation. The work that we have done, we do a comprehensive safety and security review on each one of those packages. The reviews entail technical areas including thermal, radiation shielding, containment, structural integrity, criticality, and materials. We took, I think, about 20 months to finish our review of the whole tech UMAX system, Rev Zero, and a few more months on Amendment 1. So it's not something that we do lightly, it's not something we do quickly, and it's something we do take a lot of time and really diligent work on that. At the end of the period, when we complete our safety and security review, we publish them as final rules, but we also allow for public comments, and we did receive public comments on Rev Zero and Amendment One, and resolve those comments before we finished and issued the final rule on each one of those. We are confident in the UMAX system. I've spent time, have, have looked at the system itself on paper, the Southern California Edison plans to deploy the system at San Onofre. I've been there physically, took a tour of the area this morning, and I'm confident that this system is, will perform safely and securely in the, uh, the plans that they have at Southern California Edison to deploy it. So with that, I'm here for any questions or comments and at your disposal. Thank you.